The Russian investigative committee said on Tuesday that two suspects of a car explosion in Sevastopol were identified. Russian appointed officials reported last week that a car exploded and a serviceman was killed in the blast in Sevastopol, a port city in Russian annexed Crimea. They are a 38-year-old female resident of Sevastopol and a 47-year-old resident of Yalta. The woman watched the serviceman, at the request of Ukraine Security Service, to find out movement routes, daily routine and the vehicles he used. Her accomplice made an improvised explosive device, installed it under the car and activated it, Svetlana Petrenko, the spokesperson of the Russian Investigative Committee, said. Russia's top domestic security agency, the FSB, said in a statement that the two were detained. The head of Sevastopol, Mikhail Razvozaev, said that law enforcement was investigating the cause of the blast. Unconfirmed media reports say the killed serviceman was an officer of the Russian Black Sea Fleet. Crimea which Russia annexed from Ukraine in 2014 in a move that most of the world rejected as unlawful, long has been declared a fair target for Ukraine by its Western allies. Установлены лица, причастные к совершению теракта в отношении военнослужащего в городе Севастополе. Ими оказались 38-летняя жительница Севастополя и 47-летний житель Ялты. Женщина, выполняя задание службы безопасности Украины, осуществляла наблюдение за военнослужащим с целью установления маршрутов передвижения, распорядка дня и используемых им транспортных средств. Ее сообщник изготовил самодельное взрывное устройство и, установив под днище автомобиля, привел его в действие, в результате чего погиб капитан первого ранга Валерий Транковский. A group of relatives of Ukrainian prisoners of war gathered at a rally in Kiev on Tuesday to remember their loved ones as the full-scale Russian invasion reached its 1,000th day. Teshiana Mosul's husband was taken alongside 75 others on the first day of the full-scale invasion at the Chernobyl nuclear power plant. You can say that our lives have stopped, Mosul said as she gathered with others at the rally. Without our close ones it simply stopped. At the Maidan Memorial dotted with flowers and flags, Helena Sayenko, a 66-year-old internally displaced resident of Donetsk region, stood in reverence. I never expected Putin to do such a terrible thing, to his brotherly Ukraine, she lamented. Post-worker Valentin, meanwhile, surveyed a flag memorial commemorating soldiers who died defending Ukraine in Kiev's central Independence Square. Before Russia's invasion, this was an ordinary green lawn in the heart of Ukraine's capital. Tourists would visit to take photos, and locals would stroll there on weekends. But 1,000 days of war have transformed it into a makeshift memorial, dotted with blue and yellow flags each honoring a soldier who died fighting Russia. Many were volunteers who left their civilian lives behind to answer to defend their country. Their loved ones, left alone with grief, hope their sacrifices won't be forgotten. They plant small, simple flags, hand-marked with the names and dates they died. Over time, the flags have multiplied, fluttering in the wind as the seasons change and the war drags on. For a longer perspective, I don't make any plans, he added. We are still waiting for our victory, otherwise it will be a catastrophe. As the war continued, the place has transformed. The grass has faded away, replaced by well-worn paths resembling those in a cemetery, winding through thousands of flags. Among them, many portraits have appeared brought by relatives showing confident, smiling faces in military uniforms.
Даже можно свою родную страну, Украину, да, с Москвой так бомбить. Можно? С-200, С-300 и врат на людей посылать без защиты. Это ж нельзя так. Я говорю, Путин, я никогда не ожидала, что вы такую гадость сделаете родной Украине. Без планів якби не можна, план на 2-3 дні обов'язково є, на дуже майбутнє велике, поки що немає. Поки що чекаємо, коли ми переможемо, бо інакше буде.